So in this Python video we're going to look at creating a program that can generate a random dice roll. Now this might be quite good if you're developing some kind of uh, RPG game or some kind of quest based game that's dependent on rolling a dice and getting a random number. So getting straight into it then, uh, with any time we're using uh, random numbers or trying to generate something random in Python we have to use the uh, random module. So we're going to import random and then I'm going to set up um, a nice little uh, function here that is going to do the dice rolling for us and then we can just call this dice roll as many times as we want and it will return us uh, the value that it is randomly generated. So it shouldn't be too long this video, quite simple, quite straightforward. But all we need to do is set up a variable that's going to hold the dice roll so we can call this dice uh, let's call it dice roll, no one's called with a capital R just so we aren't mixing up function names and variable names. That is going to be equal to random dot rand int and then in brackets we're going to go from 1 to 6. Um, 1 being the first number we could choose, 6 being the last number we could choose and anything in between it will return. So we didn't really need to do uh, <laughs> that much of a function because there's nothing in it, but we could call this as many times as we want. Um, and what we'll do is we'll return um, return dice roll um, from our function. So if we wanted to print dice underscore roll, obviously you might not always print this, but dice roll. Let's just call this Python. Uh, let's go to. We'll just save it to the desktop for now. Save. Um, we get one. So if I just copy and paste this a couple of times, four times, let's give it a run. You can see we get one, four, one, two. So each time it runs through, it's going to randomly generate a new number, uh, assign it to this variable called dice roll, return that variable, and obviously we're printing it out. So now we've got the basic uh, sort of dice roll functionality going. We're going to try and turn this into something more of a game. So I'm going to get rid of this, and in between uh, the dice roll function and our import random, I'm going to set up our main function. So this is what we'll run at the uh, once it's read through all the code, uh, and in here we're going to call upon the dice roll function as and when we need it. So if we're making a game, um, something as simple as two people roll a dice and whoever gets the highest score wins um, that round or that game or whatever. So obviously we need to check for a couple of things. We need to check if the dice is greater than, equal to or less than um, the other dice and depending on whoever rolled highest would win. So first thing we're going to do is just set up two players. So I'm going to put player one equals zero and player two equals zero as well. Obviously they're going to have zero score. And what I'm going to say is, we could do three rounds of this, so if I'm going to, I just want rounds equals uh, one, so while rounds does not equal uh, three, so while it doesn't equal three, um, we're going to go ahead and do some dice rolling. So while rounds doesn't equal three, we could do player one. Uh, let's just do let's do some text first. So round equals oh actually round plus converts to a string round rounds like that. Uh, so we'll just print out whatever round number it is. Uh, secondly, we want we want to do a, a dice roll. So we could say uh, player one equals dice underscore roll so whatever's whatever's returned from that uh, will be put into player one we can go ahead and print player one here and uh, let's just let's just give this a run for now because what I'm going to do is put something here rounds equals rounds plus one let's give this a quick run let's make sure if it's working so round one or two okay so I should change it to four sorry and then we get round one two and three. So we know it's pulling a randomly generated number from this function, it's in, it's giving it to player one and then every time it runs round obviously we want to reset the uh, the score player one has gone. So we can simply copy this 
and paste it in, just swap out player 1 for player 2 and then again with this, copy this and uh, I'm just going to add a bit more context to this, so this is player 1 uh, role that equals uh, whatever player 1 is so obviously I need to convert this to a string again and I'll probably just copy and paste this because it's easy, saves us time Okay, so uh, let's give that another run just to make sure everything's working so far. So round one, player one rolls a three and player two rolls a five. So in this instance, player two should win. Round two, player one rolls a six and player two rolls a six. So in this instance, they would draw. And obviously, six would be equal to six um, in our code that we put later on. And then round three, uh, player one rolls a three and player two rolls a two. So in this instance, it looked like it would be a draw overall. So... I'm going to, in between the rounds there, in fact I don't need so many, um, next one we want to start doing some if statements. So if player 1 uh, is equal to player 2, then we can just print uh, draw, else, uh, elif, sorry, elif player, uh, player 1, is let's say player one is greater than player two then obviously print um, player one would win player one wins um, and then a final else print player two please player two wins I'm not sure why I'm typing some of these words when I'm obviously meant to type wins and always put window anyway um, so pretty basic let's give it a run let's see what happens okay so invalid syntax and we need a call on that let's try that there we go so round one uh, player one rolls a five player two rolls a six player two wins correct round two player one rolls a two player two rolls a five player two wins again and round three player one rolls a five and player two rolls a one so player one wins now um, you could set this to be so whilst it doesn't equal let's go for ten and that will obviously do us uh, nine rounds okay so round one two three four five six seven eight nine nine rounds if you wanted ten you just have to bump that up to eleven uh, so from here we could add some more functionality in, functionality into it we could have that um, if the player if player one wins then we add one to his score and then if he wins the most rounds then he's the overall winner but it would work in a pretty similar way as this and we would do that outside of our while loop um, we would add in here uh, player one player one's uh, wins equals player one wins plus so uh, let's do it here quickly for us let's see player one wins so this is counting how many wins equals itself player one wins plus one um, so let's go ahead let's just go ahead and do this shall we um, so player one wins equals zero for now and player two wins so obviously going to equal the same thing why is that be cheating let's go ahead and copy that so if player one wins then we do it else player two wins uh, which we need to change that to player two uh, so here we are we're counting up how many they've won so outside of our while loop we could have another if and we could say if um, player one wins is let's go with equal to player two wins for now because then it'll be a draw uh, print draw so again it's just a very similar concept elif player one wins it's greater than player two wins then we print player one wins and obviously when you're making this you'll probably have a system whereby the player can enter the name and you would substitute instead of it saying player one here it would pull the name from the variable that it was um, the name was assigned to earlier on in the code and then else uh, print so if player one doesn't win obviously then player two wins simple just like that so it's run through the rounds and then it it, it brings the uh, check in to see who's won in the overall rounds now this is the 
output's going to get quite long. Uh, so player two wins reference before assignment. Okay, there we didn't change player two. Uh, let's give it another run. So let's see. So player one wins. Uh, there's a draw. Player two wins. Player one, two, one. Draw one, one. So it looks like oh yeah, overall player one wins. And obviously we could uh, add here player one wins, and uh, we just print out how many. So we could say uh, play on wins games one not games one let's say rounds one rounds one equals uh, str player one wins and we'll just add this code in to the player two wins so rounds one and swap that out for player two wins it looks right for me so far let's give it a run so in that instance uh, player two wins they won five rounds let's just get rid of the exclamation mark it's just a bit too many at the moment let's go with a nice dash um, we could get rid of what they rolled but that doesn't really matter too much I'm just going to do um, here Actually, at the end of it, so after it announces who wins, I just want to put a backslash n for a new line, just to separate. And it's easier for us to read. So there's round four, round five, round six, round seven, eight, nine, and then eventually player one wins rounds one five. Let's keep just run running it to see. So that's a draw overall. Player one wins with six. Player one with five. Draw player two wins there. So pretty um small amount of code there for a very small game that can be easily run over, so we can add to it to change the player one name. Um so it's a bit more personal. Um but that is a basic setup for a dice game.